I'm frozen. Am I live now? Did I manage it? Oh, I hope so. I hope so. I hope you can see me. Woo. All right. And I hope you can hear me. That was the strangest thing. The only thing I can think of is we've had inches and inches and inches of rain here today. So everything is flooded. So am I okay? No audio. Ah. Well. Well. Any. Let me see. Whoops. Can you hear me at all? This. <laughs> You're so sweet, Lisa. Whoa. Okay. I've got I've got the sound on and it's responding from this end. You've got audio? Okay, then we're good. Hi Lisa. We were so lucky. I got I showed them your worksheet for figuring out what to charge for quilts on Sunday. And then today I got to see your awesome printing on fabric screen printing thing. Oh my god. Gosh, that was so cool. So, girlfriend, you are something else. You are one talented gal. Now, I want to show you what I'm working on, but I'm doing one little thing that's really cool. So let me see if I can bring the cameras down to me and show you what I'm doing. Okay, hold on. Let me see. Because, you know, we're working on this art quilt. Let me see if I can tighten this camera up. I don't have my IP man tonight because he's not feeling well. He's running a fever. So my sweetheart is sick. I'm hoping he's going to be okay. But anyway, I don't have the camera on here tightly because, you know, I don't know how to do this stuff. So I'm doing my best, but it might not be good enough. Oh, thank you, Miss Polly. I tell you what. That kitchen makes me so happy. Okay, I'm going to do something before I show you this, okay? All right, now, I want to do one thing really quickly because I like the effect that it had. I have been working on this background today because I wanted to move ahead and show y'all the... Um, I wanted to show y'all putting the uh, me putting the flamingos on it, but I'm having a little bit of a tricky time. Let me see. Maybe I can get this done. Let me see. I just I wanted to show you what outline stitching does because <laughs> my camera was sinking into the sunset. That's what happens when I don't have my wonderful IT man. So, but let me just do this real quick. And then I will show you. Real quick is probably the problem because the quicker I do it, the less more sloppy it will be. But then I'll show you what I've done to this so far. Okay. One more little line. And that's right under here. Okay. Come on. Oops. Okay. Let me see if I got it. All right. So let me show you what I've been doing to this background, ladies. But anyway, if y'all haven't had a chance, y'all have to catch up. The reason I didn't know Miss Lisa before she came here is because I don't do Facebook. I don't trust some of that. Now, this is going to sound real funny because here I sit on this, but I don't trust social media. <laughs> so let me see if I, okay. And I've got this camera on so loose. I know Mark would shoot me, but, oh, I don't know. Okay. But he would know how to do it better, but I'm not going to bother that man he was at work all day came home he told me he wasn't feeling that good and sure enough he came home with the fever okay so 
this is my background. And remember, I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing a flamingo quilt. And I was looking at pictures of the flamingos. And I just, I couldn't help myself. But see this photo, I was doing some research on them. Because this is going to be a collage art quilt. And I couldn't help but think of ballet dancers. Then that led me to thinking of Edgar Degas's, Degas, his ballet dancers. And this is a studio he painted in the late 1800s um, of some ballet dancers. So, see, remember this, and then remember this, and see if you can figure out my pattern and then here is my background and like I said I've been working on it and trying to make it come to life because I want it to look like an old Parisian dance studio. So see this? So yeah, you would think that somebody that's putting her whole life on YouTube wouldn't be so worried about social media. But okay, I just got my first smartphone a couple weeks ago and I don't even know how to use it. <laughs> but anyway, do you see what I've done with it? Oh, thank you all, guys. Thank you. So this is what I've done. I've put a ceiling in, and I noticed in the painting it was very dark. And then I got my trim put in. And then do you see what I did? I did ink tents and stitching to bring out the molding lines, okay? And then I did ink tents in this corner and a little bit stitch of stitching. And then here... I did the little archway and did a lot of ink tents. And then I was doing the stitching to delineate the parts of the trim. Now, the stitching is not perfectly straight, but I'm getting there. I haven't done this side over here because I was going to show you a little bit of that. But I went ahead here and put some staining on the floor or shadowing really is what it is. Shadowing on the floor. So, I want to get my background to where I'm happy with it before I go putting these big old flamingos on it. So, that's, that's a better order because you don't want to have to work around flamingos. If you work around something, it, it doesn't look as real as if you had the background there first, then put the flamingos on top. So, does that make any sense? So... I, yes, I'm doing, I'm doing the a Degas background and my flamingo, oh, here, here, I was, is Lisa still here? Because I was going to show her, I showed the ladies, told them to go to your site. I think Lisa is so squared away. Not only are her videos so well edited, but she's smart. She's got all her stuff going. That, that woman's smart. And I don't know, but I heard you maybe say something about Hampton, Virginia. And Lisa, Capen, I don't know if you know, I was raised, I was born in Norfolk and raised in Virginia Beach. So if you truly live in that area, oh my gosh, girlfriend, we were almost homies. So, <laughs> but anyway, who was asking, oh, I think it was Marsha was asking about the Dega. Yes, this is my background. Can you see now where I got the idea for my background? So, don't get Hughes in that, huh? I know it's expensive. I know that. So, yeah, she lives in Williamsburg. That's great. In fact, Williamsburg, that's where Allison Glass, the fabric designer, lives. So, that is so cool. Vicki Robles is here. Thank you so many of you for coming in here. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. You haven't really missed that much because 
I was having a few problems getting in. It was showing this strange, unusual background. Oh, I'll have to check that, Jody. I will definitely have to check that. But I was just really impressed. Really impressed. So, anyway. And Lisa Capen, if you live in Williamsburg, have you tried boiled peanut soup yet at the uh, restaurant at Colonial, Colonial Williamsburg? I didn't. But I, I, I love peanuts in all kinds of forms. I love them even raw. But I don't know if I want them boiled in a soup. <laughs> but anyway. Okay. So, now what I'm going to do today, and I told you all the day I would try to have things, um, I would try to have things cut out, but I spent so much time working on my background to try to make it look as real as possible. But do you see what I mean about the beauty of art quilting? Collage art quilting is fun. It's like playing with construction paper and scissors and glue and it's fun and easy. And you know what? It's even easier than painting because if you get a part you don't like, rip it off and glue another piece of fabric on. Can't do that with a painting. But anyway, but I just thought you might like this and I'll show you later about my shadowing and all of that. Because I think you'll admit from last week to this week, it's taken on a real life. And I'm excited. So... Anyway, all right, so now I don't know what, because you see what I've done so far is done this part and done the floor. I don't know what I'm going to do over here with my door, but I can always pull off the head of the uh, flamingo and try that again. So now... I'm tired. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it's harder doing it at night. So, oh, thank you, sweetie. Aha. Well, you know, you'd be surprised. And if you have, you know, I do the ink tints, and I've got the blocks as well as the pencils. And let me tell you, these puppies, they'll change the color of any fabric. But here's what my case looked like. I think now it has a whale on the front. But this is a 24 box of ink tense pencils. And for y'all, some of y'all who don't know, they're light colored pencils. But in the little colored center, it is fabric dye that once it's dry and it's been, I heat set it just to make sure, then it's permanent. And uh, so it's really cool. In fact, let me show you the the fabric that's whoops the fabric that's in that doorway is the same gold that's right here. It's the same gold. I just took ink tents pencils and lightly um, lightly colored over it, and then wet it with a paintbrush. And do you see how different the color looks now? And then this one is different than this side because I've done just a few lines here and there and then wet it and brushed it out. And I find using ink tints, wetting them and stuff, I tend to really kind of scrub with brushes. So for Christmas, I gave myself 60 paintbrushes. They came in these packs of 10 and they were very inexpensive, but I'm so, here are the paint brushes. I found them on um, Amazon, and I got 10 of these packs because I'm so tough on them. And uh, so, I, I, it wasn't that much, $10, $15 for all 60 of them. So, anyway, but I'm, I'm tough on paint brushes. So, anyway, well, let me put these back over here. I'm going to leave them open, too, so if I want to grab them and show them to you. But tell me what's going on with that. You thought it was a mirror? See, that's what I think it's supposed to be there. And so what I did is I used a charcoal gray because to show a kind of mirror, um, a lot of times it's helpful to use a slight gray wash over it, which is translucent. 
So I think that's why you see this little part of the doorway. See, okay. Here is this part. Okay, let me get you. This part is the front of that uh, opening. Then here is where it goes back, and it's brighter because the light catches it. This, I think, is the reflected part of that. And you notice I kept the ballet bar going right on across, just like it was in the photo. But the only, the thing is, you can't tell it's a mirror because I don't have anybody in front of it yet. <laughs> and I haven't decided if I want to handle what kind of reflections I want to handle. I'm thinking of putting a little, a little flamingo over here with its little skinny leg up on the bar. <laughs> So anyway, what I've got to do now is I've got to start. I'm scared. I, I get scared every time I do a new part of it. But all I have to do, I'll show you. Let's just let me get busy and show you what I have to do. Any questions, anybody? <laughs> Y'all are so cute. Y'all are doll babies. Oh, okay. We only have, who do we have for, uh, I'm over six minutes. Oh, no. All right. Take care, Teresa Juki, hon. Bye. I like calling her Teresa Juki. I, I haven't asked her if she minds that. But anyway, well, let me get busy. And I've got my light box here. I've got a bunch of pink fabrics. And what I'm going to do, and I'm going to look, Lisa. I think I saw on your list, Lisa Kaysen, that you, have you gotten one of those really thin light boxes they have now, especially after the diamond painters came out, diamond painting came out to be so popular. But anyway, what I'm going to do here, I will go ahead and start with this middle guy. Or maybe I'll do, yeah, I think I'm going to start with this middle guy. Let me get the camera over here, guys. Okay, hold on. Let me move down. Okay. Lisa Capen has a live stream on Facebook. Oh, you do have the light pad. Okay, because I heard that they were pretty inexpensive. And so I thought it might be worth it because this is kind of hard. It's, it's small and it sits up kind of high. What I'm doing is I'm taking, for these heads, I think I'm going to go ahead and use some fusible. Because when they go down, I want them to stay down. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, the bill separately than the head. Okay? So, I'm going to come up here where I can best use this fabric. And I'm going to come up here. And can you... See, with the light box, I'm going to draw this bill. Okay, so I'm going to draw it, fill it in, because it'll help me to know what size. So I'm going to label it. It's the middle. It's the middle flamingo. Okay, then I'll come over here to this one, and I'm going, and then this is kind of easier to do it this way, too, because you can't really see through the fabric very good. So if I cut these out, it's going to act like a template, and then I'll go ahead and have the fusible there, too. And this is why I researched the animals, because I had to know exactly what shape this bill was, where the nostrils were, how it intersected with the face. So this one is the right flamingo. So now I've labeled that. So I still have some more of this, these, this scrappy area up here. So, whoa, this guy's bill is very big. Let me see if I can work this in. All right. 
But no, boy, I've got some pictures I'm going to show you Sunday of how much rain we got today. And um, it was quite something else. I luckily live high up off the lake. And um, so it wasn't going to make its way here. But there's a neighbor down there. And it got within 20 feet of her garage. So her whole bottom floor would have been flooded. All right, so this is the one on the left. So now I got the bills. And then I'm going to come in here. And I like to turn this. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Thank you. And, um, okay, so let me put this head up here. And I don't like to waste it, so I'm going to fit it in. And what I'm worried about is I want to have the heads. I want it, the birds to look as I'm going to put this down lower. Okay. But I want the heads to look as realistic as possible. But that's where thread painting is going to come in. Because there's no way I can expect a fabric to do it all. Just no way. All right, so now, so that I, I don't bore you, I'm going to come over here and find a fabric that I want to make this one bird. So, I like this because it, it has different colors. I can pretty much count that I'm not going to exactly, the birds are coral pink, so I'm not going to have... The perfect fabric. These, I'm just going to have to do my best. So, let's see. Oh, that's cute. Won't help me with this, though. Now, something like this, that's pretty good. But I might leave that for a bird that's one of the ones that's a little closer. I'm kind of, you have to audition your fabrics to see what you want to do. I think, uh, I think I'm going to go with this. I, oh, it's so hard to know. Yeah, I need to save this color for some shadows and stuff. So I think I'm going to go with this. So now let me put these. I love having, I have this rolling cart over here, which is really nice because then I can just move the things out of the way. All right, so I'm quickly, quickly, quickly going to cut this out so I can get ready to iron it. Oh, I just remembered something too. I have to do this opposite because... When you use when you use this, I have to do this oppositely. So I'm going to cut it out, use it as a pattern, and cut it the right way. Everything I cut out, all of these, oh boy, oh boy. This is where I kind of wish now it was, everything has to be done reverse order. So if you use fusible, please remember you have to re reverse the template. Okay. All right. Let's see. Poo. I am man. That that is going to be hard for me to remember. So what I probably should do is put a post-it note up that says reverse. All of these are going to have to be done reversed. So, what I'm going to do now, is while I've got it right here, I'm going to go ahead and draw it again and draw it reversed. Shoot. Okay. Anyway, but I'm very, very proud of Lisa Capen and all that she's done with her site. And, I mean, she's something else. That's wonderful. You make me proud. And you give me something to work towards. 
Okay, so now what I'm doing is I've put this on reversed. So then when I iron it on the back of the fabric, it will turn out correctly. It's hard for me to think of these things and work in reverse. Ah. Okay. All right, so now I've redone it. Let me quickly cut it out. Now, I won't waste this. I will find something else to do with that. And if I was really brave, if I wasn't on camera trying so hard to get this done right for you, I would try to peel the paper off of it and just turn it and use it anyway. But I'm not. I'm not quite that tricky tonight. Okay. But like I said, you know, normally... I like using, I, I didn't make, do any fusibles for the background. But for the background, I felt so comfortable, I didn't worry about it. Okay. So now, sorry about this, getting it all backwards. Let me turn this off for now. And then I take this bird's head shape and... Pull this fabric out and put him on here. All right. So at least I'm going to get a, a, at least one bird on here. And then I will show you what I did to the background to make it distinctive. Oh, my gosh, you had to plow snow. Oh, my goodness. We haven't had, I've had maybe, you know, 15 snowflakes this year. But you probably don't get a lot of slow e snow either, um, Lisa. In fact, Lisa, I came last year to, I came to the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Show. I had a really good time. This year, I'm going to go to South Carolina, to Greenville. And I'm very excited about that. So now what I'm doing is I'm just pressing, pressing the head shape. I'm impatient. Sometimes I think if I do this, it'll hurry up. <laughs> yep, last year I took three classes, I believe. It was, it was fun. I had a good time. All right. So this, ti this time I'm taking down in Greenville, I'll be taking classes from... Um, I'm so excited. What's her name? The, the lady who does the quilting art show. Um, and then my favorite. Um, oh, gosh. You know what? I'm sorry. My brain's not good um, tonight. Sorry about that, you know. But um, what is her name? Brubaker. Susan Brubaker Knapp. And then I'm going to take classes again from, um, she's from Denmark. And she's the one that really got me into um, art quilting. And, oh, Marjan, Marjan Klupfel. So I'm taking classes from her. All right. Now, this is so I can get something on the background to show you. Let me grab my background over here. And then, and you know what I could have done with this quilt this time that I didn't think about, but that I could have done, was remember how I did the pattern on the golden threads paper? Oh, I don't know if I'm that good yet. <laughs> uh, one day, I've taught locally, but I've never done more than that. Okay, so 
What I'm going to be doing, let me pull this back up, is I want to place this, this little lady here. And I can see by the drawing that her head's going to go up in front of this mirror. And her neck's going to come down like this. Okay? So what? I want to make sure the front of her face bumps right here. And, whoops, I've got too much of her face above the bar. But see, I'm just looking at what are my little registration kind of points. So I think, well, I think that this is pretty good right here. And then... She's got, uh, let me, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take and kind of measure just to kind of keep it. Oh, good. I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good because this is just about life size. All right. <laughs> I'd love a dark chocolate caramel with sea salt. All right, so let me see. If I put this here, and I come over, see, I can even take the, the drawing down. All right, so this is really good where it is. And what I'm going to do is come and, and tear it, and the, the, the fabric won't tear, but the paper will. And I'm holding it in position because I'm not going to lose this place. Okay. So let me pull the paper off. All right. I'm going to pull this paper off. Tear it out of the way. So I can get it back up here. All right. Then while that is fusing that on, I'll pull this off. And if I wanted to, I could have used glue instead of the fusible. But it was easier for me to get the shape using the fusible. Let me make sure, gotta make sure I have this glued down. I kind of like the, the fact that this is grayed down pink because I was worried if I did bright peacocks, would it then look odd in front of that background because that's all an aged look. So I think I like this, this pink color. So there is one head, and then I need to work on what colors will make up the beak. But I think for now, I might, I wanted to do more of the birds this week, but I think, I think you might do better. Oh, thank you. I think you might do better if I showed you how I did the work on here to make it look realistic. Okay? It's not as hard as you think. All right. So... So you, you remember what it looked like last week. And so I came in here today and thought, I need to give this depth, definition. So let me get, I've got some of my liquid gel medium, textile medium. Some liquid textile medium. Put a little bit of water in there. I used my ruler when I, anytime I wanted to get a straight line, because I am trying to do the architecture part of this. All right. So I, all I had was just bright colors. I just had bright colors in here. 
And I thought, no, I want it. I want to get that, the look of that. So, in fact, I'll show you the colors I had. Here was the wall. And do you see now the difference? Well, let me get it over here for you a little bit. But you see this is just kind of, you know, more plain. And in here, I have tried to work in. Do you see all of these? You just pretty much what you see there, you try to put here. So instead of using, I didn't want to use anything harsh like black. So I went to my pencils and found like a baked earth. And this one is a dark, dark brown called bark. And so what I did is kind of looking at this, looking at this example. Do you see how much I kind of brought that look of right here? This is what I'm working on. And so I looked at where there were just here and there were, you know, because this is supposed to be an old plaster that's been touched by a lot of hands. And I just looked at what they, what he had done with his paints and tried to imitate it. Okay. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, okay. Now, so just what you see here, and I noticed in this corner, there was definitely, in this corner, let me close in a little bit. In this corner, it was definitely darkened. To ha there was definitely a darkened line. So I just kind of came in a little, here there was a little area. And it, who knows, it could be from the city smog. It could be from heat, whatever heating source they had. But I took these ink tents and just went along and added color where I saw and, and definition where I saw. I noticed down here it was a little darker down here. And then over here along this doorway, it was definitely darker up here. Whoops. Y'all can't see where I am. Yeah, there we go. Whoops. Okay, so I noticed on this doorway up here, whoops, <laughs> on this doorway, it was a little darker. So I'm just kind of coming along and doing what I see. He's already done the work, and I'm just copying what he has done. Okay, so then I come back with a brush. I come back with a brush with my medium. Now you can, okay, there's two different ways you can do this. If you use water, the colors won't be as deep and they tend to get absorbed in the surrounding fabric easier. If you use a gel medium that you can thin out just a little, but do you see what happens when I put that gel medium on this fabric? It just, the color blossoms. It might not look like, look at that. Do you see how dark that got? And look down here. Now, let's say it's darker than you want right there. I didn't mean for it to get that dark. It takes a light hand with these. Then come in here with a paper towel and take up the extra. You see how easy that is? And that's just what a painter would do with his painting. He would take off paint. He would add more. So you're just doing the same thing, but you're using, I'm trying to get these threads up. Okay, get these threads out of the way. But anyway, so by doing this, look how more much more realistic you make it look. Now let me go back and finish this here. But I tell you what, I love it. You don't have you can use the ink tense blocks. These pencils I find are just a little easier to use and now oh, look at this I'm getting some and and like I say see how I scrub it if I don't you know if I didn't need if I don't need a sharp line if I just need it to kind of create some background 
then that's what you do. Okay. All right. So there, I think you can see how much I've changed that wall, given it the depth of an old world plaster. Yeah, ink tents. It's they're made in England. Let me give you the lid again so you can see the the maker's name is Derwent. And you can get them like on Amazon. People always tell you Amazon because that's an easy place to go. Ink Tents 24. And they're ink pencils. That's what you need for fabric is ink because that's what makes them permanent. And I will be honest, they're not cheap, but they'll last you a long time. You take really good care of them. But I think now they have a whale on the package. But just as long as you're looking for the ink tents, they have to be ink pencils because the ink acts just like a dye. So, okay, so now I've done the wall. Then I wanted to do this bar that they were going to be, the, the ballet bar. So I came in along the bottom with the darker bark, okay? And, yep, Michaels carries them. And then I came in with more of a brown because the bar is made of wood. But I, since this is in the background, I just... I have to have it look definite. So I came in and then did the lighter color there. And once again, when you put this on, it just blossoms. Okay. Now, I'll give you another example. They show in, in the work here, he has a lighter brown piece of trim across here. So I go in with my orange first, then I'll come in with a little bit of this lighter brown. They're just layering colors, then come in with the bark, which is the deepest part of the brown. Mostly coloring that on the top, not as much on the top, but mostly in the bottom. Okay, because we're going to give that a look of depth. Now, I'm going to come in here with a smaller paintbrush because I don't want to keep putting this medium everywhere. And I kind of would like it to stay put this one little place. In fact, let me put this right by it so you can see what I'm doing. It's this piece of trim right there, right there. So I come in now. Look at that. See how that blossoms on there? Now, mine's, right now, it looks a little darker than what he had. Oh, there we go. See? Just dab it up and get it just the right look. All right. So, along here, there looks, along here, there looks like just a little bit of something. So, I'll come, whoops, I'll come back in. And just do a little striation here. You have to be use a very light hand because this ink tense, it blossoms so much. It's like, whoa, didn't mean that to happen. Now I'll go back to the wider brush. Come in here and look at that. And don't forget, if you do an intense color, come back, um, wipe off your brush in between different looks. Okay. So now, so I've shown you how I got this wall looking like this. I've shown you how I did the dance bar. you got to be careful because, now, one thing Ink Tense comes with is a pencil, and then I keep a little cup of water to put my brush in in between uses to keep the medium from drying on it and also to rinse some of the color out. Let me back up. Whoops, back up a little bit more. Okay. Now, I want to show you there is a special pencil in the ink tense container. And it's very important. It's called an outliner. Let's see if you can see that. Whoops, need light on it. It's called an outliner. Might not focus. But let me tell you what an outliner is. And you keep, keep a little hand pencil sharpener. The reason I say a hand and not an electric 
is because you want to only take off what you have to. Every bit of this you're cutting off is expensive ink. So I only use hand, um, hand pencil sharpeners. And never sharpen an ink tense pencil that's gotten damp. If you've just recently used it in a damp area, don't sharpen it until it dries. You'll take all the ink off of it. All right. So this outliner, the beauty of the outliner is it does not, it is not dye. And that way you can put a line in that you feel safe is not going to, um, like, let me put it up here. I'm going to come along the edge here. This will not run and will not bleed. For when you need a line that's going to stay put and give you definition, but not add or bleed, you use the outliner. And it comes in very, very handy. Like right here, I did the sewing, but it didn't quite go right to the edge. All right. So here I looked at, you see, I have to do all the shading right in this part of the arch and that's what that's what I've done here now I didn't have this side to, but I could kind of mimic what I thought it would look like over here and uh, so I probably should do a little line close to the edge because that's what kind of trim it is but and that can come over here and this will stay put all right so and then I came in, I said, all right, that's all well and good. That's looking pretty good. But um, I said, this is all well and good. Oh, you're welcome. I didn't know it. I didn't know for a long time either. And somewhere I read it and I went, no wonder. <laughs> and uh, so it's really nice to have that because then you have something that stays put. But anyway, but I knew I needed a little more definition, so I came in here and I just sewed. In some of the places where I sewed, like I sewed the lines up here for all this trim, because the trim is defined. Do you see the trim? It's defined in the photo, okay? See all the little lines? Well, I did them. I did some ink tent shading, but then I also sewed. And to make the line show up better, I did the barest zigzag. And from a distance, you can't see it, but it gives that line a little bit more importance. I will do a little bit of a zigzag if I want the line to be more pronounced. Then I'll do straight stitching if I want to just, you know. And, and this line right here, I'm going to have to go back over and straighten that out. I don't like that. But anyway, so then you do things like you look at the drawings. And what, what else can make this look realistic? Well, it gets lighter here, and you see the angle opens up this way, and that's perspective. This corner is the smallest point. It comes out. It comes out this way and this way from that corner, and it comes up this way and down that way. So do you see how it just, and that's what gives perspective. All right, but I noticed that the trim had a lot of dark smudging near it. I showed you earlier how I did this because the floor had a lot of smudging or shadows on it. And see, this is why you do it before you add your foreground. Because now it's here and I don't have to worry about doing it around the goose. So, over here I haven't done anything. And so now let me work on that just to show you. My favorite colors right now are bark and this brown. Sometimes I come in with a lighter gold color because then I can, I can come in here and give a look of light, sunlight to this. You know, because that's what the light from the window. You can tell the light's coming in this way. See on this? See where the light catches that and catches this wall? So the light's coming in from a window over over here, over, over here, and it's coming in this way. So I can put a little yellow on that. What is the light catching? It's also the light is catching up here at the top part of this trim. 
So I put a little touch of yellow because look at this. See the trim? That whoops, that little piece of trim catches the light. So I will put a touch of yellow and I'll even come in and use the ink tents, the white one, and I'll put just a touch of that. Now watch what happens when I hit this with the, the gel medium and it will really blossom. See that? And since I'm doing what in effect is going to look like an old painting, I'm going to take and blot most of my colors. And that way I can get off the excess because I want to keep it very subtle. All right, let's see. The outline pencil is, looks, it looks like a black. So it's probably very much a type of like, you know, graphite pencil like we normally write with. All right. You will find when you get these pencils, the first one you need to buy more of is your white. And I have a couple extras that you can buy them independently at art supply stores. I think I got mine from Jerry's. Sometimes you can get them from Blix Art Supplies. All right. So, over here, I need to figure out what's going on. Oh, I see what I haven't done yet. If you look over this doorway, it's really dark and smudgy, okay? So, I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to do a little bit heavy over here. And that is means that the sunlight is not hitting that. All right, now come back in with my brush and now put the medium on, see what I've got. And you can see why I'm hard on brushes because I do smudge it to get it. And then this one I'm going to rinse off before I put it back in the medium because that was a good amount of color. But now look at the difference in these two sides. See these two sides? Yes, the liquid medium is really good. Now, some people will buy, um, this is chroma, chroma krill textile medium, and I keep it in here because the bottle sometimes leaks, and I don't want it to dry out. I love this stuff. But you could also use aloe vera gel, anything like that. But it's really, to me, it's critical... I started using the ink tints at first and didn't think the colors were very good. Well, when you use a gel medium, the colors are much better than water. So this, you could use aloe vera gel you can get from Walmart. This is a, is a was made by the Chroma Company. It's Chroma Krill Textile Medium. And I bought this bottle um, from Amazon, but any art supply... Would, would have it and it's either gel medium or this is a textile medium and I like it because it's thin it doesn't get too goopy or stiff all right so now I'm going to go ahead and figure out what's going to be over here I know the light is coming oh I know something I need to do I need to come in here and put a little bit more the light is coming from this direction so on this side of these fluting on this, the key, I have to put a little more color. Okay. Oh, that really brings that out, doesn't it? Okay. Now, if, if, it, if it covers too much and you don't get the highlight, then come back in with the white and carefully... Put it where the light is hitting. See that? You're not too late, Miss Diana. Hi, sweetie. All right. So now I know my light's coming in this way. So I'm going to make sure that this side is a little lighter of the doorway. But because this is a column, a decorative column, but a column nonetheless, I'm going to have this darker here. And then a medium 
So I have the dark bark, the dark brown, then a light brown, and then I've got my yellow here. So now let's come in with the textile medium and see what colors develop. But do you see how easy this is? People think it's difficult. Now you could, if you wanted, you could, if you wanted, put all the different grades and colors of fabric. But I think that might get a little too fussy for me. The beauty of our new quilting is anything goes. Fabric art is fabric art. And these are, this is called multimedia artwork. And I have entered a quilt in a show that had the painting on it, that had lichen, real chicken feathers, <laughs> You know, anything goes because this is artwork. So now I've gotten both of these done. So now I think I need to work a little bit here. How is this going to look? The closer it gets to a window, the brighter it's going to get. So now what I'm going to kind of do is I'm going to follow. I mean, I've got this batik for a reason. I'm going to follow some of this shading in the batik. And just kind of emphasize it. I know that closer to this column, it's going to be a little darker. There'll be a little bit of a shadow. Especially on this side, away from the sun. But there'll be a little shadow near this. But I'm going to kind of, and I know up near here, because everything up high seemed to get a little grubby. And I think that's just from the smog or the heating smoke. Then I know that along this trim, it was darker. Okay, that's a little shadowing. But I'm going to leave some of these light areas because I'm going to I'm going to show the influence of having a window over here and what that's done. But these are old plaster walls. Have they've had a lot of use and abuse. A lot of feet, a lot of hands. And that's the fun, I think, of this is you're putting your own touches. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow where the light area is, where I'm leaving it light, because I want that light from the window to kind of bring this wall to life. And then I'll come back in the medium and blend the areas between the dark browns and the yellows. Okay. And it doesn't look like I'm doing that much. But now watch. Watch what happens. Now this, I'm going to take a little bit of that off. Like I told you, it takes a very light hand. But you just brush this over it. And everywhere you've done the pencil, it'll make it bloom. Okay, so now it was that easy to give a lot of a lot of interest to this wall. And I'm going to go back over where I want it to stay lighter, take a little of that off. Then I can go back in while it's a little wet and add that yellow to it again. And then I'm even coming here with a little bit of this white and see if I can add that. Okay. So now I think it looks like a pretty good aged wall. What do you think? Now, I have the ceiling up here, and most of this ceiling is going to be cut off. But I'm just going to come in here and kind of do some of this bark color and at the edge of this ceiling I'm just going to because I don't want that to really show up but I'm going to cut this off somewhere right along you know just barely above here anyway but I'm going to 
And see, this is all I found of the ceiling in that picture. All I know is, yes, it's dark. How dark? I don't really know. Okay, then I'll come back in here with the medium. Wow, it really did turn it dark. And I'm going to leave it like that. Because the only thing I can see from the medium, I mean from the photo, is that it was dark. Okay. And as I told you last week, I used Jenny Byer Border for the columns. Here are the columns there. Here is the freeze, the plas painted plaster decoration at the top. And this is, oh, and you know what I see? Okay, so this column continues up. So I'm going to come in here with this bark, and I'm going to continue this up. And then over on this side, it is showing, on this side, do you see how it's showing the light? Whoops, let me show you better. Okay, on this side I just did, it's showing the very dark as it comes up across. Here it's showing the light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw a white line up, okay? And then I'm going to come in here with my small brush because I just want this to be the shadow. Oops. And I'm going to wipe this between colors because I don't want to contaminate the white that I did on this side. All right. Look at that. Do you see this? You, yeah, look how this looks like it's standing out. Doesn't it look... Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool how that works? It really does give it that 3D look. And it's that easy. I just did straight lines. So, now I need to come over and do it here. It's going to be the same thing. I'm going to take my bark color, which is the dark brown. I'm going to come around here. I'm going to come up. And then over here, I'm going to take the white. All right. Okay. I am going to put a little dark here, just a little definition there. Okay. Now I'll come back in with... I'm going to do the light color first so I don't have to worry about wiping my brush. And then I'll come in here and do the shadow on this side. Look at that. Isn't that cool, guys? Isn't that awesome? And that's just Jenny Byer border and these ink tense pencils. What do you think? All right, so now one thing I want to do is I want to come in here and give a little more definition to this. I don't feel like I've got enough. So rinse that off. I am going to put a little more white on here for the reflection of the sun. Then I'm going to come in behind here with the bark and do this dark. All right. And then I need to do a sharper edge right along this thread. And. Okay. Now, let me use my little brush. And let's see what we have here. 
I br clean my brush because on any kind of light color, please don't overdo it. You will be very disappointed if you are too heavy handed. And remember, okay, let's say that I've done this and I don't like it. It's too dark. Come in here with straight water, wet it, wipe it off. You can still edit these colors as long as they haven't dried and you haven't ironed them. You can come in and edit that. See? So, I think, what do you think? Does that, does that do it? So, we're about done here. I've got to go up and check my mark. He's running. He came home and he said he wasn't feeling good. He went out and found out he's running 101 fever. So I need to go take care of it. But anyway, now I hope I've given you, whether this is architecture or whether this is an outdoor scene, the, the things apply the same. Look at the, look at the thing you're, you're drawing. Look at the drawing you're, you're making, your inspiration. And what you see one place, put it in here. So I hope, I hope this has helped you today. And I hope you see that I've taken scrap fabric and ink tense pencils and turned it into what looks pretty cool. You know, it's a pretty good imitation. So, and then now I'll start for the next week. Since, you know, this is, I have to figure out what to do on this side. But I'll start cutting out all of my flamingos. And then I'll show you what you will do. Thank you. I don't like it when my Mark gets sick and he wouldn't go get a flu shot. And, oh boy. Let me back this out and then hold it up one more time for you ladies. Thank you for watching and being patient with me. And I'm making this up as I go along. So, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm doing it in real time with you. So I'm trying my best. Let me get my camera. And don't forget Send me your photos of what you're working on at our time to quilt at twc.com. And I think that's a pretty good background. And now we're, we're going to work on these fling, flamingos and get those put in. But I hope I've shown you it's just that easy. It truly it is playtime. I love that you said that, Diane, because that's exactly what it is. It's just playtime. And it always makes me so excited to get down here and work because it's it's more fun than cleaning house and quilting. Oh, and Diane, I have a, a friend's quilt on the, on the frame. Remind me I don't like quilting for people. <laughs> so if you haven't started, I know that we're doing birds. But we have to have a home for the birds. And you know what? Don't feel like you have to do a complicated background. You could take a piece of hand dyes. Like I have these hand dyes. You could take a piece of hand dye and put your bird on it. It doesn't take much to make a fascinating um, or proper background for your quilt so just grab some inexpensive fabric to serve as your foundation get some glue and scissors and scraps of fabric and come back next week while you see me start to build these birds well okay stay dry it is a um, i mean we probably have had four inches of rain today it's been crazy <gasps> Pardon me, but we're safe. We're up high enough. I just have to go take care of a sick husband. Take care of yourself. Do something good for yourself. And doing an art quilt, doing a, a collage, mosaic, art quilt, it's a great place to start. Okay? I will see you next Thursday. And if you can't wait that long, come and see us for our Sunday chats. I've got a bunch of fun things to show you for Sunday. All right, and something new to do with foam core board. Hmm, what can I be doing this week? Take care, guys. Bye-bye. See you next week. Bye-bye. Good luck.
Give it a try.